Okay, just a little new design update here. I thought I would go through some of these and show you where I am on some of these designs. Um, this is a plate mostly of animals. Well, I guess they're all animals if you consider people animals, but um, I've been asked to do uh, wolves for a long time, so I'm trying to get together a, a grouping of them, and I don't know, while it's kind of coming out okay, I'm not really good at doing fur, I struggle with that a lot of times, so I think I have that going pretty good now, and uh, I thought I'd do some wolves in different, um, uh, different positions and uh, different groupings, different sizes um, while I'm doing that. Well, I'm kind of in the wolf kind of groove, so to speak. There's one kind of howling, not your kind of real iconic one of kind of a side view and up close and whatnot. But um, I don't know, kind of a little bit different position right here. A uh, pair of them. Kind of, I, I might add a little bit more of a darker tone to them to make them look a little bit more a silhouette in nature. Uh, this one kind of kicking back on the rocks, I see that as a, a foreground image and I've kind of left um, areas around it bare so you can kind of put in whatever type of rock you want or tree or whatever background. You can have, you know, sky in the background or you can kind of put this in the foreground of kind of a more forested type of thing, but um, um, I don't know, that one I really struggled with getting the uh, fur just right and the shadows just right. It's easy to get caught up in texture uh, when you're working on animals and kind of lose track of the form. You know, the form should be really the utmost thing that's important and shadows and giving it weight and everything like that. So if you get caught up in too much of the detail, it can kind of lead you astray and you can kind of get caught up in uh, something like that. Silhouettes right here, this is a rather large um, design right here, so it's going to be shrunk down at least to 75%. And I might do it in two different sizes because I really like these uh, two in a grouping like this. And of course, if you just ink up one of them, you can just use one of them. So if you group them though, you can, uh, you know, if uh, people like both of these animals, you can save money on it by having it in the grouping. But of course, like I said, if you just color up one of them, then you can have just one in a pose, or you can create like a whole pack, you know, you can kind of replicate these. And if I do them in two different sizes, um, you can have some in the background or something like that. It'd be kind of interesting on a foggy day to have kind of the darker ones in the foreground and have kind of smaller, lighter ones in the background and kind of give it this misty feel. But anyways, I think, uh, you know, the wolf uh, icon is uh, really conducive to uh, kind of an interesting kind of a emotional take on uh, things as far as lighting and kind of the atmosphere that you put him in. Working on these two right here, this is a woman with a drinking a coffee, but I don't know, someone gave me the idea of kind of looking into the scenes, having more figures kind of looking out into things, and uh, this is a woman with a little bit of a coffee like she's looking out and this is someone I, I had her kind of sitting on a pier but I, I didn't want that then I started thinking about putting her on a rock and I'm kind of undecided I might just have this shadow so you can kind of have her sitting on whatever you want but um, kind of at, you know gazing out in the distance really kind of had to work on the uh, profile these two will probably be reduced a little bit in size and scale uh, this large bird right here, again, uh, kind of more silhouette in nature. I imagine um, kind of a heavy sunset or something like that, or, or a moonlit scene where you can have something nice and dramatic. This is a fairly large design here. Uh, there's a pen to go along with that right here. So I'll probably do that in about a 75% or something like that. I'm not really sure, but um, I don't know, maybe two sizes. This is the design that I was working on before. I took out the trees, you know, I uh, I really feel like putting the trees back there, but I feel that if I just leave it as it is, then you can put, kind of put whatever type of tree you want in the background and not have it so specific as far as um, pines or deciduous or something like that, you know. Or you can just leave it as is. And uh, again, this could be um, snow or it could be you know, spring or summer, depending on how you color the um, sides. And I gave it this bank to go on another side if you want to uh, create kind of an inlet. This isn't one stamp or anything like that. This is separate. 
it's similar to my other bags that I have, but it's a little bit different, Nina, in terms of kind of matching up the side of this one. And if I want some kind of foreground, I have this down here. I'm still kind of working on these two and kind of working on the transitions out into the water area. But again, this could be just a mound right here, and you can have this, um, you know, dry. It could be a dry area. We do have this pier here, so that does say water, but. There's nothing to say that that water could have receded and you could put grass in here or whatever you want. It could be more of a seasonal type of thing, you know, coming in here, but this could be stamped anywhere you want. It could be in the background. Lower, you can have this in here or not. Thinking about kind of grouping it as a trio of images that can kind of go with each other. I showed these earlier on a different uh, video, but this is a grouping of birds like that. I imagine this in front is something but kind of reduced greatly in size, probably 50% or something like that. But I see these uh, silhouettes as something that's, you know, can kind of be very dramatic, you know, flying against a, you know, like a full moon or something like that, or, you know, a sunset scene or something like that. You know, you can just do a brayered background, in fact, you know, you can do that thing where you kind of mask up a sun or a moon or something like that. And you can have these birds flying across there, and that can you know, lend itself to something rather dramatic, and it would be perfect with a sane or something like that. Little coyote down here to kind of go with the uh, the wild dog type of thing. Coyotes look a little bit different in terms of the ears there. Yeah, a little bit large. I can, I can do this 100%, but probably do it a little bit smaller, maybe in two sizes. This is a woman on a horse right here. It's trying to play around with their hair so that, you know, you can tell the hair. You don't want it to look like straw or something like that, but she's kind of off riding in the sunset or whatever. You can put her on the beach and you can imagine like some water or something back here, you know, off on a sunset ride or a morning ride. You can have her in kind of a veil of mist or something like that through a pine forest. I think that'd be kind of interesting. A little bit of a larger doe. Um, I don't know what size I'll do that in. It's fairly large, you know, right here. Just again, the pen size and whatnot. Quarter size piece of paper would be about like that. I like it kind of large, but um, I don't know. If I made it too small, it'd be, you know, too similar to the other one, so I'm not really quite sure. Mostly silhouette, but I've left a little bit of a kind of highlighting in there to kind of round the form a little bit and talk about, you know, a hint of lighting on there. Uh, these are birds from the past. I never released that eagle there catching the fish. I, maybe I'll do that this time around. Maybe I'll reduce it really small uh, or something like that. I'm really enjoying using these two eagles a lot. Uh, this was a wolf that really gave me a lot of problems over the years. And it's again, it's about, all about that fur. So you have to get that fur down just right. You, it has to look soft, you know, otherwise it's going to look awkward and... Uh, but you don't want to get so detailed that you lose the form, so it's kind of hard to do a, you know, uh, an animal that's covered in fur unless you do it all in silhouette or something like that. But on this one, I wanted to describe the uh, the different forms on here. But you know, there's texture, but um, I don't know. It's it's largely a kind of a grayish wolf that has some uh, different. Uh, Coloring in there, it's very large, because I had to kind of get all that detail in there, but it will be reduced down to probably about this size. And I imagine it's somewhere in the foreground, and you know, and you have your scene in the background or whatnot. Or you can just do something simple, a few branches around there and vignette it or something like that. And I think it would be, you know, reasonably dramatic to have something like that. So, kind of a spirit of the wild type of thing. Um, Here's this one right here. I did a video specifically on this one right here. I'm getting pretty close. I texturized it a little bit more, and even on two-dimensional types of, you know, line art drawings, I try to give it a lot of depth and to, you know, appear as though there's uh, multiple layers in here, and you try to give it a, a sense of weathering. And I do that through a couple different processes of, uh, as far as pen and ink work, but um, I just added a little bit more texture in here and to vary some of my uh, uh, line weight forms in here. And I'm probably still doing that. As I get kind of in the spirit of things, I kind of get into the flow a little bit. Then I remember some different marks that I used to use and I'll kind of employ that in the different designs that I'm, you know, kind of already uh, almost done with. 
larger deer again, you know, kind of mostly in silhouette, but I leave a little bit of these larger ones with a little bit of uh, highlighting on there in case you want to put a moon or something like that. It really uh, would define that lighting in there or a sunset or something like that. Or I don't know, someone did a, like a wildfire type of uh, thing. Um, and uh, you can even have something like that. So you have to leave a little bit of that space open on the inside there to color it, whatever color scheme you're working in, so that you have a relationship between the light form or the uh, source of light and the reflected light you know, and creating that relationship. And again, if you wanted to create more of a silhouette, all you have to do is stamp this type of thing and just color it in with black or something like that. Here's my other bird in water. This one took me forever to get that uh, kind of stylization down there. It's highly stylized, you know, those ripples down there, but I think that would create kind of a nice, elegant and, uh, I don't know, maybe poetic type of uh, scene. I can imagine something like this at night. This one is largely silhouette. I left a little bit of light in there, but... Uh, uh, sometimes when you do that, it's just better for the uh, stamp, too, when you're working with uh, inks and, uh, you know, using force and pressing things. You have to leave a little bit of space on the inside for that stamp to breathe at times. Caribou. And this is a fun little design right here. Just this kind of this boardwalk or, you know, walkway going into the distance. I imagine it with trees on both sides and whatnot. Or you can leave that as a... As a walkway going across a body of water. It would be something probably more akin to like a resort or something like that where someone's done some stylized landscaping or whatnot, but um, I don't know, it kind of creates this, um, the S-curve is really um, kind of graceful type of um, object to place within a, a scene. Sometimes I do it just with objects and I kind of create this negative space with a somewhat of a flowing S-curve. So this is just something to kind of lead the eye in there in a nice graceful manner and it goes off in perspective and I've uh, I might tone this a little bit more but I've add have added some shading here to kind of give it a little bit more of an easy transition for whatever you want to put on the side if it just is a, you know this walkway alone that would work just fine but I think you need that little bit of tone right there just to expedite the process of uh, blending it in with whatever's around it so Anyways, grouping of designs, kind of, uh, it's the most animal designs I've done in quite some time, but um, I don't know, I'm having fun doing it, and uh, I don't know, I think I even have enough for a, uh, you know, uh, just a, like a wild dog plate, so I might group those together for those that might be interested in that type of thing, or might like wolves, or even that spirit of, um, you know, that they kind of rep represent, if you're a farmer and you have like chickens or, you know, uh, livestock, they don't represent something, you know, anything too uh, positive, but uh, as far as your nature scenes and if it's someplace kind of out in their own, uh, you know, wild, uh, the wilds of, uh, I don't know, what it used to be like, uh, um, I think wolves are kind of a, embody a nice spirit uh, for that, but anyway, bunch of designs, a little bit more work to do on, you know, just about all of them. Whenever I think I'm done, I kind of look at them the next day and I think, oh, you know, I had a little touch here or there, a little bit more shading underneath something and go in and add it in. And, uh, I don't know, at some point in time you just have to ask, okay, am I just taking it too far or is it truly done? When it doesn't look like it's improved, then I guess it's done, you know, over the course of several days. So anyways, new designs coming around. Okay, thanks for watching.